quite a, it's quite a big volume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Upper body stability. That right low shoulders low in standing observation as well. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. Right. So it's just it's slightly low, but the legs are even. That correlates. Yeah. Uh, knee tracking. It's a pretty decent trace actually. Quite symmetrical. Not mm -hmm. consistent. In it. Yeah. Not a great deal of, of spread. So you, you can yeah. use the tracking. Just back on the shoulders again. Shoulders. Mm -hmm. So you can see that centre line, we're going to the left now, aren't we, more? Yeah. Dropping yeah. off to that left side, which is reflected in that saddle. So at the bottom of the pedal stroke on the right, Chris is moving to the left. Yeah. So there's like a torsion to the yeah. left at the bottom of the right side. Yeah. Slightly tighter on the right side, hamstring hip flexor. Okay. And then we're slightly higher on the heel, so compensating a little bit on that right side, aren't we? Yeah. And we're looking down here, aren't we? Yes, looking from above, yeah. All right. Obvious, sir. Yeah. It's obvious, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then in terms of an overall picture, um, the reds. Reds unstable. Yeah. You know, green is stable. So what we yeah. want to achieve by the end of the session is once we've stabilised you, yeah. once we've made some changes to the position, hopefully we'll see most of this picture be, you know, yeah. be green. So that's a nice way of just um, summarising what we're looking at. And then also putting some numbers on some of the, the, um, the movements of each part of the body yeah. so that we can reference you know, how the changes we make yeah. actually change the, the real time stability, which is yeah. quite nice. Uh, and that's just to report what you're trying to see. So you'll get, you'll get to this. Yeah. Anyway. So that's our starting position. And I wonder whether we can start making some tweaks and changes on the chip. Yeah. If people just tell us the way you need to capture them. Or, or yeah. Yeah, I think we'll just work on overall now. Yeah. Then we take another picture, then we do this for shoes. Yeah. And then we'll uh, go back on again. Cool. Okay. That's going back on, sir. Yeah. Uh, one of the big things we've changed is footwear and pedals. So that older saddle I was based on Tarmac shoes, which were quite right. thick. So yeah. now we're on the speed play and different shoes, we need to lower the saddle to. Tight grouping and relatively consistent knee tracking. Um, but we 
see on the recording report that the right knee is slightly more unstable than the left knee in terms of volume of movement uh, from the midline. So that could be something that we look at and, uh, and can help improve. The pelvic dynamics are quite interesting. So as Chris is pedaling, he's dropping over to the left side of the saddle. The bottom of the pedal stroke on the left, the pelvis moves across to the left. You see that here, it's the centre center point of the pelvis is moving to the left side of the midline. It's not moving symmetrically to the right. So the slight drop to the left. You can see the volume of movement on the trace here. What are you seeing over there? Uh, so this is a, a live feed of Chris's uh, saddle pressure. Um, if we go to, to this recording report here, this is from the starting position that we, that we uh, captured while we were capturing the 3D at the same time. So there's more loading on the right side around the around the sit bone and the, and the, the, the pubic rami. Slightly less um, loading on the left side, which is interesting when you take into account what's happening with the pelvic dynamics on, on the screen here. He's dropping across to the left side of the saddle. So for some reason we're lacking contact on the left. If we can increase the contact on the left side of the saddle, we may help to stabilise the pelvis. Thanks, Morgan. Okay, we're going to chip back in with Jules, Morgan and Chris in about 20 minutes.